In this video, we're gonna be showing exactly how to take an ARCHICAD model into Twinmotion and then finally into Photoshop. All of these results are gonna mimic that of path tracing even though the M1 Mac still doesn't have that available to it. It doesn't matter if you're a complete beginner, an intermediate, or an absolute professional, there's gonna be some value in this video here today for you. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And without further ado, we're gonna turn around to this screen to get started with today's tutorial. So now we have ArcCAD 26 open in front of us and we're gonna start with a very simple modeling exercise to be able to get something into twin motion. So the image that you see above me is going to be our reference image. I've gotten this directly off Instagram. I'll tag whoever the person was here. I'm just using it as a very simple reference. So what we're gonna do is start in ARCAD 26. We're gonna press Command and the seven button to open up our story settings. We're gonna start by introducing a few additional stories. So let's go ground ceiling and also a second floor. We then want to introduce a roof above and our footings below. I'm gonna go ahead and change these story settings. So pause the video in a second and copy these into your software. And there we go, pause that, introduce that into ArcCAD and now press OK. We're gonna start with our wall tool, come across to our wall structure and then we're gonna select any of our brickwork. Let's use the cavity 50 mil block brickwork. If we zoom in, we're gonna see we have a garage, a small, what appears to be bedroom at the front, an entry and a room upstairs. We're gonna very quickly mass out these spaces. So looking at it, we're gonna have a six by six garage. What you're gonna see is we have a rounded corner on one of these sides. So let's select two of these walls, fill it slash chamfer option, and we're gonna fill it. We're gonna maybe do about a meter and see if that's approximately right. That looks quite good to me, so we're gonna keep it as that. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna highlight everything. Control or Command M whilst pressing the Alt button, mirror it across, Command D and move it one meter away. I'm probably gonna move it another 500 mil just cause that's a little bit close. And then I'm gonna select that bedroom and shift it out approximately one and a half meters. Now this bedroom appears to be significantly taller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna link that to our second floor and then I'm gonna increase that another 200 millimeters further. I'm then simply gonna mass out a simple box at the back and introduce our door somewhere approximately in the middle between these two spaces. So that's gonna be our shape for the time being. Jumping into door settings, we're gonna be able to put our garage door in and our front door in. So if we jump ahead and use the vertical sliding garage door 26 with the style six activated, change our model settings to a nicer color. We're just gonna make them all white. We'll have to make the door significantly bigger cause it's way too small for what we need it for. So I've made that garage door four and a half meters wide. Next, I'm gonna simply jump into the settings again and find our front door. I'm simply gonna use door 26 again, make it a plain door and paint it all white right in the middle here i'm then going to select all of my walls straight away open up those settings and change this to a white brick so white neutral brickwork and press ok again if we jump into 3d let's see how much we've created already we've very quickly and very rapidly created the foundations of this entire project. So I'm gonna copy the settings across below those walls to reduce the height, link all our brickwork settings so it actually comes out properly. And now looking at this image, it appears this garage wall is definitely linked to our second floor. So let's increase the height of that and let's increase the height of that size as well. And there we've started to produce something that looks quite similar to what we see in this render. Now the most important thing about architectural renders is the details. So what you'll see up the top is we have a flashing for the roof on all of these parapets. So what I'm gonna do is quickly introduce a slab that goes on top of all of these about 50 mil deep and paint it titanium white. Coming back to our ground floor plan, simply selecting our slab tool, selecting the outside, selecting that slab, and reducing it from the inside, we rapidly form the shape we need. If I open up the settings, make it generic, 50 mil, let's paint it glossy white in this instance actually, because it's going to be a metal rather than anything else. We're gonna increase that to five meters, just so I can see it directly in 3D and find it quickly, and then Command D to drop that down on top of our brickwork. There we go, we have our metal flashings on both our parapet walls. I am actually gonna paint this titanium white instead of the brickwork because it does appear in the image that it is rather white. Next, we're gonna to jump to our second floor and create this upper bedroom. Right clicking on our ground floor to show us trace so we can see what's happening below. Take that same brick object, 
and then simply drawing a shape that suits the overall project design. So for me, it probably looks something like that. And of course, we wanna curve that edge again to a meter. Selecting all those walls, let's increase their height to the roof and let's increase that another 750 mil because it is quite tall in this instance. Now we again want to select those walls. We want to decrease that 257 mil, which is the height of our slab below. And we want to push it forward probably about another meter and a half. Then we create our portico into our entry. An important step, what we want to do now in ArcCAD is see how these materials don't align. What we want to do is select all of our walls with brickwork, come up to document, creative imaging, align 3D textures, set origin. Now we can set the origin from anywhere as long as it is consistent. So I'm simply just gonna pick that point there on the project. And you'll see all of our brickwork has immediately aligned. Now let's jump back into our ground floor plan, select a window that works for the front and top. Let's use variable window 26, untick upper and lower transom so we only have the side light active. We're gonna turn that into a top hung and we're obviously gonna paint everything black. Pressing okay, let's drop that window into our space and then adjust it to the size we see fit. Personally, I think that's probably about two and a half meters wide by two and a half meters tall, roughly centered into the room. So if we come back into our 3D model, maybe I've overkilled that quite a, a little bit. So let's make that two meters tall and two meters wide, dropping it down approximately in the middle of the project. Using our slab tool, we can then create the actual window box quite easily. So to grab the slab tool, simply draw a 450 deep slab, change the settings so it's only 10 mil thick and paint it black. We can repeat that process for the entire window all the way around. Jumping back to our ground floor plan, let's copy this window, move upstairs and replicate it above as well. Now that we have the window above, it is slightly smaller. So let's make that 1500 and raise the window higher in the picture and copy our window box up the top as well. And there we go, we have the predominant start and shape of our actual building. It's probably a little bit wider than what we see here on the image on the left. So if you wanted to shrink it down and make it a bit more proportioned, you definitely could, but we have the generic shape. Last but not least, I'm gonna introduce the flashing on the top of this parapet, and then we're gonna make a quick start on the ground below. Okay, so we have the flashing up top, we can start making our ground. So let's start by using the mesh tool. We're gonna to start at the actual door. So drawing a simple square and changing our settings, it appears that they're using some sort of stonework. So let's use stone 12 in this instance. Let's come back out here. Let's then extend that further out, drop that 100 mil and extend that all the way out here. What I will do is adjust the nodes 300 mil to the right hand side so I can start creating a curved pattern. Come back down into our ground floor plan, take out polyline tool and simply zigzag a crazy stone pattern cut out into the actual texture. So now that we have a bit more of a jagged edge, we're gonna get more of a realistic look for that crazy stone. We're then again, gonna create a very simple driveway, dead straight from that. Change our material to asphalt dark, press okay and then introduce a ground overall for the actual project. Okay, now we have our model completed in a number of minutes and we can take this in to twin motion. Now, if you're an ArcCAD user, you may or may not have noticed this desk mat behind me. This desk mat showcases all of ArcCAD's features, shortcuts, and everything that you need to know to make sure you improve your workflow. It is available in the description down below, so grab yours today for both PC and Mac. So now that we have it into twin motion, we're gonna focus on the one camera angle in particular. We're gonna set up that camera angle perfect so we don't have to worry about anything else. Let's come into media, image, let's create our first image. Next, we're gonna tap on more and the first thing we're gonna adjust is the actual format. This looks like an Instagram format. Let's go 2000 wide by 2500 height for the Instagram format. Next, we're gonna come a little bit closer in, adjust it how we wanna see fit, change our camera angle. I personally like about a 50 millimeter lens because that is the most natural to the eye. But what you'll notice is we need to extend our ground floor. We can quickly do that in ArchiCAD and come back to twin motion very, very rapidly. If we then align perfectly to where we wanna see our project, we can save our render view. What you will notice is the scene itself is not at all light, right? So let's change our dynamic lighting to a HDRI sky and let's find a cloudy sky that we like a little bit better. 
So I prefer the overcast sky 24 in this instance. We're gonna increase the intensity of the sky to really blow that sky out as much as possible. Turn our smog off, back to our lighting and manually adjust our exposure. Now this bit is what is very critical because if you don't manually adjust your exposure, it's not really gonna complement the overall scene. For me, I want it to be light, bright, and I want it to be quite overexposed in a natural instance. I also wanna bring my white balance down to really bring those white colors out against the harshness of the yellow sun. So let's make it about 6,200. We can then increase our ambience to one because again, we are looking for those white colors of the actual brick texture. Now we can come into our library and start adjusting in materials. So starting with glass, let's introduce a reflective glass. Metals, we can do our brushed aluminium for the metal framing of the windows, turn that to black and increase the reflectiveness. Now we can also go into our mega scans library to be able to get a better stone texture for the actual crazy stone. So let's use something like a flagstone floor on this crazy stone that we have in front of us. It's a little blue again, but we can fix that in post if we need to. We can also find our concrete for that actual driveway. Now we can use rough asphalt for the driveway to give it that nice textured look that we're looking for increase the size as we see fit and then introduce some earth and a quick couple plants and there we go now that we've added a few little plants in between here some leaves on the ground and two trees into our scene we have something that resembles what we're looking to create the final steps obviously because we don't have ray tracing is taking this image into photoshop so let's export this image out and take it into Photoshop. So straight away edited out, we have a really good image to start with. What we wanna do is go into Google and find a background street that we can basically copy and paste into our mirrors. So on Google, we just wanna find a suburban streetscape. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. This one's pretty good. The sky is horrible. So we'll change that sky to match something more of what we have. So Photoshop, edit, sky replacement and then we want to find a very overcast sky in this let's accept that sky replacement merge those together and overlay that into our actual window so now if i reduce my opacity down to about 30 40 percent i can see what we're using and how we're creating that reflection. So if we make that reflection look something like that, we can then crop out the actual window glass from the window frame. Delete the rest of the image that we don't need and you can see that we have a reflection very quickly activated. I also then wanna copy and paste some of our sky over into our secondary window and repeat that same process. And now that we've introduced this ray tracing lookalike, we can merge our file, come to image at the top, adjustments, brightness and contrast, adjust our contrast a little bit, decrease our brightness as we see fit, and again, repeat that step for our curves. And we can introduce our S curve into this project to make it stand out a little bit more. Finally, we wanna remove that blue as well. So if we go into hue and saturation, go into our master, go to our blues and our cyans, we can decrease the blues entirely and decrease our cyans as well to make that more of a stone texture that we're looking for. We can decrease or increase the lightness and finally press OK. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you check out the playlist to the side of me for more great architectural content. If you loved it, make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button. But like always, I'll see you next Monday.